Hello, hello! Okay, so this is a very casual vlog. Um, I asked on Twitter if anyone had any questions and I got some really good ones. So thank you so much to everyone who sent in a question. I really appreciate it. I've never done a Q&A before, huh? Okay, so the first question is actually a two-parter. So I'm gonna answer the first one first, which is, uh, how do you feel like your YouTube channel reflects on you as a person? Um, and what do you feel like you've gained from posting videos? Uh, that's actually a really interesting question. I feel like the one thing that I've gained from making videos is confidence. Uh, because looking back on my like middle school, high school years, I could have never done this. I was a nervous wreck when it came to anything about speaking publicly. Like I've always felt like my biggest insecurity in life has been my intelligence. Like I, I don't want to appear stupid and I'm not the best person at talking, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, uh, which is why I started doing YouTube so that I could practice speaking. I don't know if you understand what I mean by this, but I always know what I want to say, but I always feel like it comes out differently. So like I'll have a sentence prepared in my head and it will come out stuttering or with a lot of ums and and yeah, I just never sound like I want to sound. <laughs> Especially in school, this was such a pain because I was terrified of the teacher calling me out to do something because I just couldn't. And even if I knew the answer, just like the answer wouldn't come out and or it wouldn't come out right and people would laugh and blah, blah, blah. Painful school experiences. <laughs> and obviously the worst thing that I could ever do was oral presentations and having to stand in front of a class speaking uh, just terrifies me. I would have panic attacks like days before and I could never sleep the night before so it would just be a wreck anyway. And yes, yeah, I said kids are k kids can be mean. I'm not even kidding when I say that people in my class would literally have almost like bingo sheets every time I went up. So it's like, is she gonna start almost crying? Is she gonna stutter? Is she gonna uh, shake the paper when she stands there? Like people actually cross off like, oh, kids are horrible. Yes, feed off other people's insecurities, fun. I started doing YouTube when I was in my first year of university because that was a time I really needed to be able to actually stand in front of a class and speak. And I definitely think doing this has made me so much more confident in performing, I guess, uh, or being myself in front of people, which is the most important thing. Because I've never been afraid of like playing a character, like theater and stuff, absolutely fine. I could probably stand in my underwear in front of an auditorium as long as I'm not myself. <laughs> I think that because of the practice that I've gotten through speaking to a camera and having to edit myself, that has definitely helped because now I can stand in front of a classroom, don't get me wrong, I still get like crazy nervous than <laughs> the days before, uh, <laughs> several breakdowns. Uh, but the actual performance thing, I can actually do it now, which is a huge step. And I think that is mostly because of YouTube. So, can you hear my neighbors like shouting? <laughs> really? Just when I'm filming. Great. Thanks, neighbors. <laughs> okay, closing the window. Okay, so the second part of this question is, what do you find most annoying about uh, YouTubers or the YouTubers community? And this is also kind of a hard one to answer. Um, I've never had any bad experiences with the YouTube community at all. <laughs> I mean, I am a tiny, teeny YouTuber, but you know, YouTube is all about sort of finding your own group of people. Um, and I don't really have that here in Norway, but I felt like in the UK, I was always surrounded by people who do YouTube and they're all great. I've never had any bad experiences with any big YouTubers that I met uh, either, so I can't really say that. I mean, the only thing that like, I've reacted to is the fact that like all female YouTubers get cat categorized under beauty bloggers, which is the most annoying thing in the world. Uh, I've never made a single makeup video um, in my life, and I've been told like, oh, you make like beauty videos, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I don't. Not just me in general, that sort of, people talking down to female YouTubers because of the content they make, they don't t get taken seriously. Um, like one example, like an obvious example of this is like Soella, who clearly makes lifestyle videos, but she's categorized as a beauty blogger, which is really stupid. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong with making beauty videos. And it's a shame that some people look down at that. But that's like the only thing I've ever reacted to, but obviously 
tiny teeny youtuber so I don't have a lot of problems I don't really get a lot of hate either uh, except that one guy who's like convinced that I'm a Nazi I keep deleting his comments it's ridiculous like on every video he just posts about since I'm Norwegian I must be a Nazi which is the most dumb thing we were invaded that one just makes me laugh and I just delete his comments I don't even know what his end goal is I think it's like for me to pay like in damages or something I don't even know Okay, so next question is, have you ever considered doing Let's Plays? Uh, P.S. Love you, dude. Thank you, I know who you are and you're great as well. Um, Let's Plays have been something that I have attempted to do. I have footage on my on my laptop of me doing like at least four different gameplays uh, and they've never sort of worked out and I find it kind of strange because obviously when I'm playing a game I am playing the game. I'm not funny enough to like be commenting. I'm not PewDiePie. I'm no PewDiePie. I'm like just just a Norwegian blonde, well, and apparently a Nazi, so. <laughs> I mean, I would love to do it if I learned how. I don't even have a TV at the moment. <laughs> and from what I learned from filming the other ones that I've made that I never posted, it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> so definitely one day, but I don't, yeah, as I said, don't even have a TV at the moment, so. The next question is, you have worked in many places. Where is your favorite other than home? Thank you and keep up the excellent YouTube videos. Thank you. I'm so bad at taking compliments. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. That's really sweet. It's hard actually because I've spent like equal time in the US and the UK. I used to live in New Jersey for two years and I lived in Cardiff for two years. And they're all, oh, they're all so good. I don't think I could ever choose one. But then also there's Brighton, which I lived in for a while. Ooh, they all have different qualities and obviously different stories. That all means a lot to me. <laughs> so that's a hard one to answer. But yeah, can I say that? Like New Jersey, New York slash Cardiff. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> the next question is, when you first moved to Wales, what was the most striking difference between Britain and Norway? Let me tell you, man. Oh my God. <laughs> As I said, before I moved to Wales, I'd lived in you know, both Norway and America. So I never felt a big cultural difference between Norway and America at all. That was fine. But when I moved to... <laughs> okay, when I moved to Wales first, I lived right outside Cardiff in a town called Newport. If you've ever heard of Newport, you know why I'm like, <laughs> what I'm talking about it. I mean, that town, there was a reason why I got the hell out. <laughs> I love every... Like, this is a student town. Uh, the University of South Wales, which I went to, has a campus there. And I felt like all the students try to justify this town so much, but it was such a shit place. Whenever someone talks about Newport, I always tell this story that my friend Tom told me. And this was something that, that would happen, like, on a daily basis. Like, this guy would walk around town with a dead pigeon under his arm. And if you looked at him, he would go, with the pigeon, just like... <laughs> for crying out loud someone tried to steal our Christmas tree from underneath our like from our hands people smashed in our window with a brick kind of beside the point the town sucked yes but it was the student drinking culture and drug culture that sort of took me aback like don't get me wrong like I've done university before this is my second time at university i got a degree in history from the university of oslo everything was fine yes the university was hard etc etc um and i started university all over again and i was like okay this is gonna be easy i've done this before but the british drinking culture like at least for students uh, and at least in this town took me aback so much because the amount of like binge drinking is so unhealthy and obviously I drink like I, I'm not against drinking but the amount that people were drinking and smoking weed and doing as a drugs uh, like hard drugs just it was so bad and I felt like I just became the mom like I would always be the one running around like are you okay do you need water honey like ugh. I can barely remember the first year not because I was like drunk or something but because I was secondhand high the entire freaking year <laughs> because people were smoking inside the flat like in the living room and no one cared <laughs> I said I have nothing against casual drinking or smoking like whatever do your own thing but this was so bad and it became very apparent to me quite quickly that people in fact were addicted to these things like people couldn't do schoolwork 
without getting high. Um, people couldn't have fun without drinking. And that became like a big thing for me. And I tried to like isolate myself from it, but it was very hard obviously, because then you necessarily wouldn't have friends, which luckily I did find friends in the end. It took me a while and I'm not a person who ever feel like I have problems getting friends. I, I can be quite social, um, but I couldn't find anyone that I wanted to be friends with because everyone just like were out of their goddamn mind. <laughs> As you've seen if you've watched this channel, I ended up living in a house the second year in Cardiff with like the best people and they became all my best friends. So it ended well, but that first year were just horrific. <laughs> As I said, this could be like a very isolated incident, like within one town and one sort of groups of group of students um, and I hope that nobody else sort of has to go through that because young people are so impressionable uh, and you follow what other people are doing and yeah no it's not good it wasn't healthy for anyone <laughs> yay university okay, next question what drives you how do you deal with moving away from friends and family to pursue your dreams um, as I said, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but I am a person who constantly need to move around. I cannot sit still in a place for too long. That will drive me crazy. And I'm one of those people who like always thinks like, what if, what if I didn't do that thing? Am I going to regret it later? Um, and I just try to do all the things. Um, I don't take like crazy risks. I think that's important to mention. I do things that are safe so when I'm like when I moved to America I lived with a host family so I was safe in that way when I moved to Wales I was a student so I had like the student community well um the really drunk student community <laughs> and now I'm gonna be you know I'm in going to be in Disney housing I'm going to have a job so I'm not taking crazy risks of just like I'm gonna move away and see what happens uh it's all very planned so so yeah, I think I wouldn't take these risks if it wasn't for the fact that I knew that it was going to be okay. I think it's very important to try and follow your dreams, especially when you are young and you don't have anything that ties you down. Why shouldn't you? Uh, if you can, do it. <laughs> do you miss your friends at the Doctor Who experience? I'm assuming this is from one of my friends at the Doctor Who experience. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, that was the best job in the world and I got to work with the best people um <laughs> so yeah I do miss everyone at the Doctor Who experience I'm so sad that it's closing um we don't know officially when but they are doing the TARDIS tours now before they close so if you have the chance to go to that do it because that was one of the best experiences of my life to go to that to actually be able to walk into the TARDIS um which is the best set because it's not just like you know some sets they're like you have a wall missing and that's where the camera crew is and stuff. The TARDIS is actually like a big circle. So there's, there's, yeah, it's the TARDIS. There's nowhere that's not the TARDIS. <laughs> when I went back to Cardiff in January, luckily they were having like a staff party that I crashed, which was really funny because they didn't know I was coming. <laughs> so I was just like, hello. Um, yeah, and I hugged everyone and yeah, it was good. Great people. At what age would you say that you were fluent in English? I know English is taught from an early age in Norway, but what what but at what age could you speak and understand it correctly? Now we get uh we get teached <laughs> we get teached English from second grade. <laughs> you can tell that the English lessons paid off. <laughs> Yes, it's in second grade and luckily in Norway most stuff is not dubbed, most TV and films. Um, we do have subtitles though, so yeah, it's always been like, I can't remember at what age exactly, but it was always really easy and kind of very natural to me. And I've always been very big on, you know, reading in English or doing things that are makes me speak English, like moving abroad, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but yeah, Norwegians are generally really good at speaking English and now I'm very aware that I have to speak English well to answer this question and it's making me freak out and speak English badly. Ha! <laughs> but yes, in second grade you could understand English. I'm going to finish the video there. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in a question. This is really fun. I'm going to do this more. Keep on sending in questions, guys. Um, and I will see you again very soon. Bye!